Hello, my name is John Albrecht, and I've been involved in the pet industry my entire life. I've worked as a professional groomer, breeder, and even as a wholesale distributor of pet foods. And if there's one thing that I've seen over the years, it is a lack of understanding about proper nutrition for pets. It has always been extremely important to me that I am giving my pets the absolute best that I can. And I'm sure you feel the same way. Many people have asked me, what is the best food I can feed my pet? And that's why I'd like to talk with you today about Life's Abundance Holistic Pet Foods for Dogs and Cats. In all of my years as a pet professional, I have never found a better formulation. But before I share this incredible new product with you, I want to give you a basic understanding of the evolution of pet foods and why there is such a great need for a product like Life's Abundance. In order to do this, we'll go all the way back to the beginning and talk about how pet foods began. Pet foods are actually fairly new. They were introduced about the time of World War II and consisted mainly of leftover grains and cereals. This wasn't done for nutritional reasons, but because these crops had been rejected from the human market and rather than waste them, they were the start of pet foods. This was also the beginning of a whole new industry. However, it was not long before it became very obvious that leftover grains and cereals didn't provide adequate nutrition by themselves. Therefore, meat began to be added so that puppies and kittens could at least grow up without being undernourished. But again, this was not prime USDA quality meat. It was what had been rejected from the human market and rerouted into pet foods. This meat is often categorized as the five D's, dead, diseased, dying, disabled, and even drugged. You might be thinking, well, what, that was a long time ago. Surely things have improved by now. Well, you decide. Rejected animals of all kinds are still used in many commercial pet feeds. Ground up bones, feathers, and heads are still used as protein sources. Hard to digest grains and fillers are still used as well as powerful chemical preservatives to maintain long shelf life. And our beloved animals are still suffering from shortened lifespans, as well as a variety of nutritionally related diseases. Did you know that dogs and cats have the genetic potential to live well into their 20s? Yet most die between 13 to 15 years of age. We feel this is due to poor nutrition. We invite you to take the Life's Abundance Challenge. Compare our all-natural, holistic diet to whatever food you're using now. In the next few minutes, I'll be providing you with a list of criteria that you should follow when choosing the best food for your pet. If your food falls short in any category, you need to switch to Life's Abundance today. In order to do this, you'll need to be aware of how to read a pet food label. It's not enough to simply choose a food based on a pretty bag or clever marketing. You need to know exactly what your pet is eating. First, you need to know what should not be in a pet food. Once you realize this, it can literally rule out many of the commercial brands on the market today. Let's start with these three ingredients, corn, wheat, and soy. I've grouped these three ingredients together because they're basically cereal grains that should never be found in your pet's food. They're used mainly to increase the percentage of protein in the guaranteed analysis, but they are highly indigestible. Indigestible proteins cause stress on the kidneys, and once your pet reaches five to six years of age, it may be considered a senior why? Because of all of the stress placed on the kidneys through low quality protein sources. But these ingredients are also known allergens. Corn is thought to be the number three causing allergen among dogs and cats. Do you know any pets with allergy problems? Many pets with allergies often wind up on drug therapies when all they may really need is a better diet. These ingredients come in a variety of names such as ground yellow corn, corn gluten meal, whole grain corn, ground whole wheat, whole grain sorghum, wheat flour, and others. This renaming is usually done to hide the fact that these cereal grains may actually be the main ingredient when combined together. We believe that meat should be the number one ingredient for optimal health. Next, we'll look at byproducts. Byproducts are a common ingredient in many pet foods, but what are they? Byproducts are similar to corn, wheat, and soy in that they are indigestible protein sources. Byproducts can include intestines, chicken heads, duck bills, fish heads, chicken and turkey feet, hides, feathers, and bone. These are parts of the animal that are not fit for human consumption. Byproducts do not have to contain meat, and byproducts can include diseased and contaminated slaughterhouse meat and hair. Is this the kind of nutrition that you think is right for your pet? Yet many pet foods on the market today contain byproducts in their list of top ingredients. Another undesirable ingredient would be meat and bone meal. 
What is meat and bone meal? Certainly this sounds good, but is it? Meat and bone meal can legally include dead pets and animals from roadkill or vets offices that have been ground up in rendering factories. These animals may have been euthanized or have been treated with antibiotics or steroids. These animals may have died from all sorts of diseases, trauma, or natural causes. And again, we ask the question, does this sound like an optimal diet for your companion animal? And as if these things weren't bad enough, let's look at how most pet foods are preserved with chemicals. By the way, should the word chemical even be included in the discussion of good nutrition for your pet? I don't think so. Let's look at the top three chemical preservatives that are used in pet foods. BHA, BHT, and ethoxyquin. BHA and BHT have been known to cause liver and kidney dysfunction and are known carcinogens. Ethoxyquin has been used as a rubber stabilizer. So why do pet food companies use these powerful chemicals when there are clearly natural alternatives? The answer is easy. These chemicals can provide pet foods with a two-year shelf life or greater. This gives the ability to produce mass quantities of food, which saves on manufacturing costs and creates more profits. In case you weren't aware, it is not uncommon for pet foods to sit around in warehouses or even semi-trucks for up to 18 months before they are ever sold. Without chemical preservatives, these foods would have to be discarded. As a former pet food distributor, I have actually seen pet food sit one full year in the back of a semi-truck without any climate control whatsoever. Would you still want to buy your brand of pet food if you knew it had been sitting around for that long before you bought it? I hope not. What do you think the nutritional value of that food is going to be? And we could go on and on with the list of ingredients that have no place in your pet's food, like artificial colors and flavors, sugars or corn syrup, beef tallow or animal fat, which is lard, animal digest, and more. But let's take a look at one more thing that is often misunderstood the guaranteed analysis.